Good day all, thanks for the invite. Pleased to be here down in sunny Adelaide. So I'm here to talk about imagery and crop analytics in, in broadacre farming. So who are Hummingbird? We're an advanced crop analytics business. So born out of London, we've been in Oz for about 15 months now. Most of our work's been done over in Western Australia on the cereals crop, plus, plus canola, but um, focusing a lot of work on the wheat, wheat and barley space as well. Um, in terms of our team, globally, we've got 64 in there, 40 of which are data scientists and engineers. So uh, similar to Tim's business, we love data going through our business in terms of whether it's satellite or drone imagery. The more imagery that goes through, the better the algorithms get uh, and the better the, the output to the farmer. In terms of, yeah, the, the countries we operate in, so we've got 250 cu customers spread across the UK, Russia, Ukraine, Australia, and now Canada as well. So here's a snapshot of our process. So as I said, we're data collection agnostic, meaning that we any imagery that comes in from satellite, drone, or plane can be analysed through our system, which is where the IP is, and then provide an output depending on what the farmer needs. Um, it can be as simple as an NDVI map or as um, complicated as a high-res kind of weed detection map, um, which I'll go through later. And those shape files, when you uh, obtain a prescription map, integrate directly into your farm equipment, whether it be your spreader, your sprayer. Um, we did a funding round last year, and a lot of that has been spent integrating with the equipment to make it easier for the farmer. So going through satellite, so NDVI, you've all heard it before. Uh, it's you know a common metric, but I think it's a real important one for broadacre crops. You've got these massive farms that uh, I think it's, you know, the scale of them, it's not quite possible to scout them on a regular basis. So having the ability to be directed to areas um, and not take the agronomist role, but me merely tell the agronomist and the farmer you know, where might be an issue and, and have a better utilisation of time is really important. So um, I'll just take you through this. So in terms of the map itself, and I've got a couple of examples, just quantifying vegetation based on the infrared bands. So determining whether the crop's healthy, stressed or dead. Uh, the benefits is it gives you an overview of your whole crop and even your whole farm uh, in an instant manner. So subject to cloud cover, which is going to change because there's technology that sees through the clouds, you receive an image every week. Uh, you'll then have a time series of images and be able to compare different images and see what's changed between, um, between certain dates, which is important. Um, and as Tim alluded to, with the variability in, in, in fields, it's just it's so great across Australia and it's, I don't think it's being uh, tended to in the, in the best possible manner and using the best means, which is um, you know, these imagery analytics. So in terms of our uh, NDVI, we use our own transformation and calibration rather than your off-the-shelf software um, to ensure that the Sentinel-2 images um, reflect what's actually happening on the ground. And in terms of the farmers themselves, uh, you know, it highlights areas where they need to improve on, so whether that be soil structure, uh, nutrition or even drainage. So again, alluding to the time management piece, so just having that snapshot aerial overview of the crop, if you compare it to viewing you know, a 300 hectare uh, field from the side, you've got you know, two k's that way and a k and a half that way, it's pretty hard to see what goes on in the middle. So determining uh, where the issues are quickly and then get, having the ability to go, go and fix them. Um, I think it's also important with NDVI, it's a metric, so it's an index, so it's giving you that start point. So you can go back in time three years and overlay what's happened over those um, over those fields during those years, and then you can overlay other things like you know your yield maps, rainfall, temperature. But having that NDVI score as a start point, you're comparing X against X, which I think is important and takes out the the human element of risk. So here's an example here of a farm over in WA. Uh, as you can see, the crops it's not very green yet, meaning the crop hasn't emerged or it's, it's not so healthy. Um, it's been pretty dry over there as well. So this is from, uh, from last season. Now this is an image uh, seven weeks later. 
So what's good about uh, the Hummingbird platform, or one of the advantages is you can, uh, once the fields are uploaded, you can click a compare button. So then you're looking at the image uh, up the top, which was taken on the 17th of August, and you can see down in that um, bottom left of the field there, there's something happening. So you can tend to it uh, straight away, and then 10 days later, you can see that image is, um, well, that issue is no longer there. It could have been, you know, a weed infestation or, um, or anything really, and it's, it's been tended to. And in terms of the adjustment bar, so you've got the NDVI scores, but you can manually adjust that um, metric to focus on areas of concern. So you kind of, where the crops got a nice even uh, coverage, you can, you can then uh, swing that bar to focus on the areas which need, need attention. Um, and they get then, then get cross-checked against the RGB, which is just your photographic image. So this is a variability of crop growth rate map. So this is looking at a time series of two different images and just showing where it's growing fast and where it's growing slow in the fields, which I think is a really useful, um, useful tool, particularly if you've got farms that are you know, above 5,000 hectares or even 3,000 hectares, if you want to look at your whole, whole field and determine which fields, or you're you know, talking about priority, prioritizing harvest, you can look at that aerial snapshot of your whole farm and determine you know, where it's grown faster and slower and just prioritize. Um, prioritise your harvest. So cloud cover uh, is an issue. So um, at present, it is going to be eliminated. I think there's, you know, there's technology coming out that's going to pierce through the clouds. But we've actually de developed a, a cloud masking algorithm. So when you're, um, when you're downloading your, your VR map or prescription map, it asks you whether you want to, how you want to uh, spray those, those areas under the clouds, because the cloud does skew the NDVI scores. So I think that's important. Um, again, this is just a data set where you have to compare the photographic imagery to, to what's coming up on the NDVI, just to, to ensure that your, your scores aren't skewed. So in terms of our advantages, so we've got the photographic or RGB imagery, which is available to cross-check against your NDVI. Um, which allows you to further investigate what, uh, what the differences relate to. Uh, the adjustable slider, um, so you can put your own bes bespoke scoring to, to further uh, investigate areas of interest. And then the cloud masking algorithm, which uh, is pretty critical in terms of um, not skewing the NDVI scores on those fields. Now looking at our uh, UAV product, which we've done a lot of work on over in WA and hopefully do a lot of work here in South Australia. So what this product does, it's a knockdown product. So all you broadacre guys budget in your summer sprays. It's aimed at reducing your summer spray costs. So at the moment, um, you know, normal practice is to blanket apply your, your knockdown mix across 100% so of the fields. What this does is uh, you're flying a field with a UAV or a drone at a high resolution. So you're mapping the weeds that are kind of that co-can size and above into a prescription map and then uh, and then it can be it goes through our system and then it, it uploads to your, your boom spray equipment so you're competing with your weed it's and your weed seekers but what we're saying is you're mapping the, the you, you've mapped the weeds before your spray goes out there so you can better plan in terms of what herbicide mix you're going to use uh, it also integrates with your current equipment so you're not going to lose any efficiencies there in terms of speed and the like and you've also got the prescription map as a, as a data point, um, which allows you to you know, ultimately overlay with the yield map to ensure you've got, got all the weeds. If you've got more than 70% coverage of weeds, you may as well blanket apply, so it's obviously not, um, not applicable, but it's when it's that kind of 20, 30, 40% range where, you, where you're thinking, oh, you know, do I bring in the contract sprayer or, or you know, you've been thinking about buying a weed it. Um, and we've assumed a lot of our projections based on a $13 hectare knockdown mix. I don't know what people use here, but I've heard it's kind of in the realms of 17 to $19 is, um, is you know, not, you know what people are using. So it, it just creates a, a better ROI. So the fields are flown using, so it's detecting green on brown. So it's picking up, picking up the green against the dirt. Um, you can capture up to a thousand hectares in a day. Once that data is captured, it's uploaded to our platform um, and processed. 
then gives you a, a prescription map which integrates with your with your spray equipment. So you've got to, at the moment you've got to download onto USB and chuck it in, but in due course it'll be kind of drive past the uh, drive past the um, the bore and hopefully you've got a remote sensing device and it just integrates automatically. So here's some case studies. So this is a field in uh, in WA where we've it was one of the first first ones we flew. So we've um, you can see where where we've mapped the weeds there, the, the green areas where we need to spray. So there's using that solution we only sprayed 50% of the field as opposed to 100 percent and there's the RGB or photographic compare. Um, in terms of the ground truthing, we you know, always go around the fields uh, and map the different weeds. There's obviously different weeds, so they've got different um, signatures and the like. RGB doesn't it doesn't matter with the signatures, but with the multi-spec, you know, if you're doing any weed mapping, you need to you need to know what the signatures are. And in terms of the economics, so in this instance, it was a 13. Dollar a hectare herbicide mix. Uh, our cost is four bucks a hectare, so we're spraying 50% of the fields. The total cost is your 10 buck 50 a hectare. So you, your returns 19 um, 90% or two dollars 50 a hectare on, on that particular field. Mm -hmm. In terms of integration, it really is quite simple. Uh, as I alluded to, uh, a lot of our last um, bit of funding was allocated to the integration piece, which I think was a big blocker in this space previously, and um, so that's really assisted in making it as easy as possible for the farmer. So here's a, I guess, a more commercial uh, case study whereby we've flown a field that's 300 hectares and only 44% of the field got sprayed. And what, what's even more beneficial is their herbicide mix was uh, nearly $15 a hectare. So it resulted in a saving of four dollars thirty, or nearly four dollars thirty a hectare, or twenty nine percent. So if you kind of extra extrapolate those figures across um, across a full farm, it's a it's a real material saving to your costs and and hopefully your yields too. That's it. <laughs>